What's up, up Exotics fam? fam? Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the channel. channel. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. And my name is Maddox. And this is Exotic Idiotics. Welcome, welcome. As we said, you're watching Exotic Idiotics. This is the channel where we talk about all exotic animals such as reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, and saltwater fish. Yes! Now, we love the exotic animal hobby. If you have followed our channel for a while, first of all, thank you. But second of all, you know this. This is not news to you. We love exotic animals. We love this hobby. However, 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 is never good in this household. <laughs> there are some things that, let's just say they get under our skin a little bit. Mm -hmm. So today, we are gonna count down. Actually, we're not really gonna count it down. These are not gonna be in any particular order. But we are gonna talk about five of the biggest pet peeves that we have in the exotic animal hobby. So stick around and, and let's, let's get, get into it. it. Now the first pet peeve on our list is something that I see way too often. And that is watching an experienced keeper come down hard on a newcomer for not knowing enough about the species that they're keeping. Okay, this happens all the time. You see it in Facebook groups, you see it in Discord servers, subreddits, whatever. Dude, we get it, okay? You are the coolest leopard gecko keeper in Leo Addicts Anonymous, or whatever the name of your group is. We totally understand. However, when little Scotty doesn't know, comes gallivanting into your server and starts saying something like, Hey, what's up guys? I just got my first leopard gecko and I wanted to make sure I'm taking care of it properly. The store I bought it from told me to use Aspen Bedding and I just wanted to make sure that's all right. Any help is greatly appreciated. Thanks. There's no reason to respond to a message like that with something along the lines of, well, congratulations, man. You just won the award of gecko murderer. Should have done your research before you went to the pet store and bought a leopard gecko. You suck and you fail and blah, 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 blah. Let me ask you, in fact, ask yourself, what good does that do for anybody? I'm gonna tell you, none whatsoever. It does absolutely no good for anybody to go after a new keeper and be harsh towards them because they're trying to ask a question and they're trying to learn. This hobby is going to grow and it is going to get better based on the newer keepers learning how to do it properly because they're the future of this hobby. And we all want the hobby to grow and we all want the hobby to thrive. So don't sit there in your mom's basement with your one leopard gecko that you've kept alive for six months on the shelf right next to the three day old pizza box, your gaming headset and your super dope awesome PC and sit behind your screen clackety clacking at these people being all high and mighty because they don't know as much as you. We get it dude, we know how awesome you are. We can all tell by the gamer tag screen name, whatever, OG Leopard Gecko Keeper 1967. We're all proud of you. You do not need to shove all of that on the new keepers who are just in here trying to learn. Do better. Another thing that really just drives me up a wall is when people act like there's some kind of group of the elitist keepers in the hobby because they don't keep bearded dragons, crested geckos, ball pythons, or any sort of beginner exotic species. There's a reason that Beginner species such as, I don't know, everything you can find in a pet smart. Like he said, ball pythons, bearded dragons, crested geckos. There's a reason that those species are some of the most popular animals kept in the hobby. Because they make great pets. If you choose to miss out on keeping the awesome pets that are beginner species, good for you. I don't care. But don't get mad at me or other people that love keeping bearded dragons or crested geckos. I think the bottom line here is that although a ball python or something that's considered basic might not be a great pet for you, and it might not be something that you want to keep, 
the great thing about this hobby is that there's something for everybody. I don't personally think that cobras are like a great pet for me to keep, but there are people out there who have tons of cobras and breed them and keep them and absolutely love them. Does that make them a bad person? No. And somebody who chooses to keep a more basic species is not a bad keeper either. The next pet peeve on our list is when somebody thinks that the way that they keep their animal is the only correct way to do it. Now, we have never claimed to be experts and we are never going to claim that our way is the best way or the only way to keep these animals. All we are doing with this channel is showing you how we do what we do and talk about what is working for us. For example, yeah, I put my baby chameleon in a four by two by two cage. Some people would say that's way too big, but you know what? She's still alive. Also, just another quick pet peeve. Don't listen to us. We're stupid. I'm not saying go buy a baby veiled and put it in a giant cage. It worked for us, but we also knew that we were gonna have to hand feed it to make sure she gets her food. And we found one that was already comfortable with hand feeding. The bottom line is you can't realistically tell somebody that they have to do something exactly the same way that you do. Perfect example, you might have to mist your cage three times a day to make sure that it maintains the proper humidity levels because you live in a dry area. Whereas somebody else could live in a place like we do in the Southeast where it's hot and humid in the summer. This room probably sits at like 70% humidity at all times because we have so many live plants and heat bulbs and we mist and whatever. So how can you come tell me that I have to do the same thing as you? At the end of the day, everybody's gonna have a way that works for them and there are multiple ways to keep these animals happy and healthy. Another thing I absolutely hate is when somebody will tell you, oh, you shouldn't buy that animal unless you're an incredibly experienced advanced reptile keeper. I've done my research. Sure. There are exotic animals that require a lot more knowledge, a lot more time, a lot more work, a lot more just everything to be able to be kept happy and healthy in captivity. However, you can't just assume that because somebody asked a question that they aren't gonna be able to handle it. Maybe, they're, maybe they don't have the animal yet. Maybe they're trying to learn as much as they can now before getting the animal. Just because something is labeled as an advanced keeper on the internet doesn't necessarily mean that it's really that advanced. Just like if somebody says that a certain species is the best beginner lizard or snake or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best beginner species for you. At the end of the day, this hobby is all about people getting into things that interest them because if you're interested in the animal and you really enjoy having the animal, you're going to give it a better life. The last pet peeve we're gonna talk about today is somebody telling somebody else that they shouldn't own a particular pet because it is a terrible pet to have. I especially can't stand this when they've never even owned said pet. I was in a server not too long ago on Discord and I had somebody tell me, in no way, shape or form should you ever get a Burmese Python because they're terrible pets. And come to find out, this person had never even owned one before. Hey, newsflash, if you're prepared for the size and you're pre prepared to feed them in the space that they require, Burms can make excellent pets. Am I telling you it's the best first snake you should get? Eh, no, not really. But just like with everything else we've talked about on here, you can absolutely do the research and go get one of those as your first snake if you want to. If I listen to those people that are like, don't get this because it's this, 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 and this, I wouldn't have my Persinas, kill lizards, the chameleon, my Peter's bandit skink, my Yuri, my tortoise, my water monitor, my bearded dragon, I wouldn't have any reptiles. And they'll say, oh, well, you shouldn't get a water monitor because it gets too big and this is this. I freaking know! If I would have listened to those people, I wouldn't be able to interact with some of the most amazing animals I've ever had in my life on a daily basis. I love my tarantulas. I love my scorpions. I love my reptiles. I hate the centipede, but my dad loves it. So good midpoint there. Doing my own research on my own time and not listening to people like that has allowed me to just live a life where I get to enjoy my pets 
You know what? Thank you for watching. You're freaking awesome. And we appreciate you being here. <laughs> what? What's so funny? We do appreciate you being here. <laughs> that was kind of English. We do appreciate you being here. You are freaking awesome. Continue. Hey. <laughs> hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we were having a little bit of fun with this. We were a little bit intense, but these are all real things that happen in the exotic pet industry every day. And Just you know, not on that high of caliber. Keep that in mind. No, it is that high of caliber. There don't are, listen to me. There are people out there who I swear it is like their life goal <laughs> to just make anybody who's new to the hobby turn and run as fast as possible rather than just giving them the good information and sharing their experience with them. I get it, you know, some people, they wanna think that like they're part of the cool club because they have this animal and they don't want there to be a bunch of people that also own this animal, whatever it may be. But the reality is the more people that own it, the more people that are studying it, the more people that learn about it, the more people that are breeding it in captivity, the better off it's gonna be for the species as a whole. Yes? I fully agree, and I don't know how to say anything better than that. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, let's all just make the agreement here and now that we can all be better. We can all do better. We can all help each other out. Stop being a dang Karen in the forums. And if you're watching this, you know who I'm talking to. You've seen these people before. You might be one of those people. So I hope that I'm inspiring you to do something a little bit different and do something a little bit better with your life because we all want this hobby to continue to grow and thrive. And if you want to meet people who aren't like that, come join our Discord server. There'll be a link down below in the description. Also, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we will see you next time.